So this question says a square field measures 10 meters by 10 meters. So I'm going to first of all just draw that out. And this uh, gives you an example of a plug-in picture strategy, which just says anytime the question describes something that can be drawn, it's better to draw it than it is to envision it or imagine it. So 10 by 10 meter square, 10 students each mark off a randomly selected region of the field. Each region is square and has side lengths of one meter and no two regions overlap. So I'm going to give an example of one of those regions. I'm going to just choose this right corner over here and say that it is one meter by one meter. In fact, I should put the one there. Let me get rid of that. And then the question goes on to say, the students count the earthworms contained in the soil to a depth of five centimeters. That might be important at some point beneath the ground surface in each region. Okay, the results are shown in the table below. So we have our table here. It looks like each of these regions represents one of the students. And then we have the number of earthworms that each of those students counted within each of those uh, one by one by five centimeter regions. So the actual question says, which of the following is a reasonable approximation of the number of earthworms to a depth of five centimeters? We see that depth again beneath the ground surface in the entire field. Okay, so what I'm comparing then is this little square, which I know there are actually 10 of them given this table, um, versus the entire field. And we're using the count from these little, these 10 small squares to approximate the number of earthworms found in the entire field. So what our table lets us know is that the number of earthworms that were counted are somewhere between 107 on the low end, which we saw in region A, to about, to exactly 176 on the high end, which we saw in region I. So that again is only in a one by one. So I'm going to look at this from an area standpoint. We could treat it as a volume, although because the depth is five centimeters for the entire field and for the one meter little regions. I'm going to just ignore the depth for right now and say that in a one by one, right, uh, you know, between 107 and 176, I'm going to say there's about, I'll just choose a number in between there, 135. And in fact, let's look at the answer choices. Looks like 150 is a good number. There's about 150 um earthworms in each of these little squares on average, right? We know that each square has a different number, but on average, there are about 150 earthworms per one by one um, area square. So the area for the entire field would be 10 by 10, which is 100 square meters. So if there's 150, if 150 equals one square meter, then how many would we expect to find in 100 square meters? Well, that's just multiplying that 150 by 100, in which case we would get 15,000 earthworms, which makes choice C make the most sense. Again, choice A, if I were to do a little bit of process of elimination now, choice A wouldn't make sense because as we saw, you know, even in regions... G, H, I, and J, they're all at least 150 just in that one by one square that the student tried out. So that 150 cannot be the number for the entire field. 1500 is multiplying that by 10. Um, so we know we, get, we can fit more than 10 of these one by one squares inside of here. So we're gonna get more than 10. Um, this 15,000 for choice C, we got that by multiplying by 100 which is what I'm thinking works. And then choice D is a bit big. We'd, be, we'd get 150 by multiplying, or sorry, we'd get 150,000 earthworms by multiplying this 150 here by um, 1,000. And we cannot fit 1,000 of these one by one squares inside.